I was in kind of a self-imposed exile over uh, winter break from uh, Facebook. Sure. Uh, well, but yeah, that it, sounds actually kind of nice. But because of that, I missed a message on the No More Whoppers Facebook page from our listener, our own Charles Shelton, a.k.a. Chuck Shell. Uh, he suggested a Pittsburgh meetup. And uh, even if that... and. and I think he meant um, all the No More Whoppers listeners in Pittsburgh. But as far as I know, it's just him and my dad. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think that would... I still It still would have been cool to hang out, even if it was just us two. Just, I don't know, having a sandwich or something. I think by default, your dad is our biggest fan in Pittsburgh. I th- Yes, I think so. So, I mean, no one really can compare. I feel bad, though. I, I wanted to... You know, I never, I never get to reach out and spend time with, uh, with the fans. Yeah. You know? Well, we're young yet. It's not like we have a ton of fans to go see. I know. Somehow uh, our our panel keeps getting pushed at every con that we apply to. <laughs> well, if you would just stop trying to be a joker and, and stop calling it nude baking, then maybe we'd finally get an in somewhere. No, you, you messed it up again. It's nude bacon and it's a Photoshop nude Kevin Bacon. That's the joke. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. So, Chuck. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Chuck. Uh, perhaps next time, maybe over the summer, I might be in Pittsburgh over the summer. We could, uh, I don't know, get an alcoholic beverage. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I noticed when I was, uh, there in good old Pittsburgh, again, specifically Bethel Park. I'm not uh, right in, I'm not living in the city where I know I have to survive. Um, I, I, I noticed a guy working the checkout lane, uh, bag and groceries, uh, it was a guy I knew in high school, actually from middle school. Oh, okay. I, I did not engage. I have a do not engage policy <laughs> when it comes to these things. <laughs> Sorry, uh, just imagined you as a robot for a minute. <laughs> if it's not part of your program. I walked right up. First words out of my mouth were, you're coming with me, criminal scum. Is right. that it? There we go. Okay. That took me a while. <laughs> that, that's the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. <laughs> That's not RoboCop or anything. It's sorry. That's a medieval RPG. And I wouldn't think anything of this. You know, maybe he's he's going through uh, a hard time. Except he was he was working the exact same job the last time I saw him ten years ago. Oh boy! So he's been bagging groceries for ten years. Now I don't mean to sound insensitive, but does he have like a problem that may you know sort of keep him pegged in that sort of job, or is he a normal guy? Uh, you know. He's a normal guy, I think. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure he graduated from college. Uh, I think he majored in psychology. I'm just going off what I remember from his Facebook page. I'm obviously <laughs> not going to name this gentleman. Uh, but yeah, he's not. He's uh, by no means unintelligent, but somehow seems stuck uh, a bag. You know what? Hang on. Maybe I'm reading this incorrectly. Maybe it's just, oh, it's the holidays. He wants to earn some extra bucks while he's in town. And so he took a yeah. job bagging groceries. Okay. <laughs> On top of his other bagging job. Yes. <laughs> um, stunt double for Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> uh, you know, with all the funky grocery store names they have in the East Coast, I'm surprised there isn't one called that. Or just what? Baggins. Bilbo Bag- yeah. <laughs> Hang on, let me Google that. <laughs> I do it. Oh, I hope I'm not right. I hope you are. Hang on. Like seriously, what do we say, Baggins? Yeah. Okay, hang on. Supermarket. Like, what the hell is Publix? I don't know. There's a lot of stupid supermarket names. Yeah. Uh, did you mean su- <laughs> <laughs> supermarket Barkins? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, I. Yes, I did. <laughs> well, technically, yes. Uh, <laughs> No, the first result is Bilbo Baggins on Twitter. Sure. Billy Joe Armstrong, Mike Dirnt, and Trey Cool are my heroes forever and hashtag idiot and proud. Also a huge Lord of the Rings fan. <laughs> Jesus Christ Supermarket. Greenday.com. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's No More Whoppers. How's everybody? I'm fine, thank you. My name is Ray Barnholt, the express written consent of Major League Baseball. And with me as always, a guy who's really good at, to be determined, Alex Fraioli. Hey. 
<laughs> I'll have you know I'm, I've achieved several certifications. Yes. Such as? Uh, uh, brown belt. Yeah. Grand it, wizard. Mm-hmm. Um, what else are you? Um, Pontifex? Alex, you are not. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> seriously. How's everything what? on your side of the grass? Good. You know, it's winter. Uh, yeah. Wait, my side of the grass? Yeah. I don't know what I meant exactly. The uh, unfortunate sequel to My Side of the Mountain, perhaps? Because we're separated by thousands of miles of water, so that wouldn't really... Wouldn't apply. How's it going, Alex? Good! <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's um, go with the second take. I'm fine. No, I mean, <laughs> we're, keeping uh, we're keeping it. We're keeping it. We're keeping it, and we're keeping it real. As far as I know, you were you were watching various editions of The Dark Knight Rises. Pretty much, yeah. Um, this is my first week back at work. Only a three-day week back at work, yet somehow I was still exhausted and stressed. Well, yeah, I think uh, you know. So I, a lot of air travel will do that anyway. Yeah. So I decided last night, uh, Friday night, I decided to make it into a, a uh, beer and Batman night, which is uh, pretty good. Oh yeah, B and B, B Y O B. Yes, actually, it's uh, it's a little something I like to call TGI effortless. <laughs> uh, Basically, good. I just I get off work, I go to the convenience store. I get a nice pepperoncino, you know I'm a big fan of that, yeah. maybe some popcorn, get a few beers, and I come home and I just watch Batman stuff till I fall asleep. It's almost like my Saturdays. It's awesome. If this was a tweet, it, used to be. it would be hashtag bachelor. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's kind of what my Saturdays used to be like. Yeah. Um, I like the name, though. I like your name much better. Oh, yeah, it's... Um, do we need... Do we good. have a jingle for that? Uh, Like the old TGIF jingle? We're gonna have some fun. Show you how it's done, TGI. For less. Is that good? Um, yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Okay, good. Um, I started off, I, I, I picked up the uh, Dark Knight Trilogy Blu-ray collection at Costco in the American States over vacation. And, you know, I've seen all three movies, of course. Um, pretty sure I've seen The Dark Knight, I don't know, a hundred times. Uh, so I decided wow. to check out some of the bonus materials because each movie comes with its own disc of bonus stuff. No, that's not true. Batman Begins is all on one disc and the bonus stuff on mm-hmm. one disc. Dark okay. Knight and Dark Knight Rises have their own separate bonus discs. Thank you. Citation So needed. I pop. Yeah. Well, it's, I could, I'll take a picture. So I, I popped in the Dark Knight Rises bonus disc and I, I watched a half hour car porn featurette about the evolution of the Batmobile, <laughs> which was actually kind of interesting. Um, but there's it's, only it's about like, 80 of those in existence features yeah, about yeah. the evolution of the Batmobile. Yeah. This one was good though, you know, but they, um, they showed how each iteration was inspired, uh, you know, all the way from the first one in the thirties and how they've all kind of evolved and stuff. Yeah. And, but like they're 30s. trying so hard, oh, yeah, like so. they, fa- they, they got the people who were behind, uh, the, the shitty Batman movies like, um. You know, George Clooney, uh, he's a little kid, etc. Mm-hmm. I mean, not, they didn't get George Clooney, but, you know, from that era. Clooney tunes! And, thank you! Oh, I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> and they're trying so hard to legitimize the shitty designs of these Batmobiles. Like, we want to... You know, the, the the woman who describes like, you know how when you look at a bat, you uh, and it's flapping its wings, you can kind of see the body underneath <laughs> the the skin, the the wings... Yeah, that's why the engine is is covered by that uh, rib cage looking thing. It's because like, you can see the engine through the outside of the car. Co- what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. That was my response. Like, just, just stop it. Get to get to the good cars already. Yeah. Jiminy Christmas. <gasps> I watched another feature uh, featurette, I guess, about how they rigged the opening of Dark Knight Rises with the planes, which is a really cool sequence that I love watching. Uh-huh. Uh, another one about uh, all the work that went into the one on one fight in Bane's Lair, which was a great fight. Uh, I feel a very powerful fight. Now, Bane's Lair, that's in Scotland, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Actually, funny you mention that. In the, <laughs> the, fe- the feature read about the plane sequence, uh. they actually they filmed it all in Scotland specifically because they said most of these scenes are done over very blank uh, terrains and deserts and sure. such. They wanted to get all these hills and valleys and stuff in the background. I was actually oh, very, very impressed with how jokes. much of that. <clears throat> don't even know if that's possible. I was legitimately impressed with how much of that sequence was actually done with practical effects. Yeah. Like they, 
they put together these planes for the specific purpose of you know tearing them apart. Um, they wanted as much of it as possible to be practical effects, and I love when uh, directors do that because I'm so I'm just fucking sick of CG all over everything, and it's obvious. Yeah, I think uh, we mentioned, uh, or I did a couple weeks ago, that yeah, a lot of CG just is getting increasingly fake looking. Yes, so it always it always uh, warms my little boy action hero, action movie love and heart to see stuff done yeah. for reals, for realsies, for keeps. It looks a bit more believable in Pacific Rim. I don't know if you saw that trailer, but that... I have not. What's up with that? Uh, I was just saying, CGI-wise, it looks more believable than other stuff, I guess, of that magnitude, let's say. I don't even know what that movie's about. Um, it's kind of a uh, sort of tribute to giant robot movies, also okay. Godzilla and stuff. It's just okay. about this military force that builds a giant robot to fight all these huge monsters that appear out of the sea. So it's kind of a, it's from, it's like from Del Toro. So yeah, it's good. Okay. It looks really impressive, really fun looking. People are hyped for oh, that. Speak, speaking of Del Toro, wait a minute. Am I thinking of, wait. I, I don't know. Who directed the first Hellboy? He's a director, yes, right? That, yes, yes, okay. that's him, that's him. <laughs> there we go. Okay, yeah. I was about to tweet this the other day, but, you know, while I've got, while I've got everybody's attention, let me just say it. Um, I was a big fan. Uh, first of all, I'm Alex. Second of all, I was a big fan of the first Hellboy movie and the Hellboy comics. Does anybody know if I will like the second Hellboy movie? Because I heard mixed reviews. That's all. Oh, okay. Just to, <laughs> it's going to take two weeks for me to get a response. I don't care. <laughs> Audience? <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> I don't know. Then I just uh, then I just watched The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises back to back. You know, mm-hmm. great films that go even greater with beer, or in this case, uh, fake beer. F- fake not, beer. Not 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 non alcoholic beer. It's uh, Ye- beer made from uh, barley instead of hops. Oh, okay. Is that like a snooty thing to say to call it fake? Are you being snooty? No. Well, there's a thing about beer in Japan. Um, there's a beer tax. If you're selling beer, there's an extra tax on it. It's, a, it's <laughs> yeah. slightly more expensive. So what a lot of companies do is they will sell, you know, if they sell beer, they sell beer. Uh, if they want to sell a cheaper thing, they'll also sell uh, mugicha, which is not mugicha. <laughs> it's barley tea. <laughs> oh, all right. um, uh, this is keen mugi, which is um, a brand of... This off beer. It doesn't actually contain beer. It's just a, a beer flavored alcohol drink. It, it tastes very similar to beer. And sure. if you're a beer snob, yeah, not even a beer snob. If you just if you know a beer, <laughs> yeah, um, then you're gonna know it's not real. I st- I still think they're pretty good and they're a lot cheaper. Uh, so I just had a, some of those. And I uh, got close to my friend Bruce Wayne, and I watched his <laughs> adventures yeah. unfold in multiple languages. That's right. I, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. Okay, here's the thing. I was excited. I tweeted about this before. I was very excited mm-hmm. that Batman Begins had Japanese subtitles on the disc. Because this was a Blu-ray set I bought in America. Why the hell would there be Japanese subtitles on the disc? Well, as you folks may know, uh, America and Japan are the same Blu-ray region. So I think for, for purposes of simplicity, they may have just used the same disc in both releases uh, for Batman Begins. But oui. uh, by the time... Uh, thank you. Uh, see. By the time... Batman, no, that's not the name of the movie. By the time The Dark Knight <laughs> and The Dark Knight Rises came out, I guess they had stopped doing that. So I've got, I've got this set now of these three movies that I love, and only one of them has Japanese subtitles. If you're curious, I want the Japanese subtitles because I like watching nerdy movies with uh, girls sometimes, if I have a girl over. A Japanese girl. Oh, okay, yeah. Not with girls in them. But that, yeah. That no. <laughs> I mean, that works, too. You know what? I've been watching male-centric movies for far too long. <laughs> That's just how misogynist you are. Yes. Oh, boy. I I'm, I'm making... That you are speaking Japanese. I'm working on a supercut of the entire trilogy that cuts out all the women. <laughs> Jeez. It's coming out pretty good. Uh, it really, really makes the ending to Dark Knight Rises confusing. There might be a market for that. We don't know. Because yeah, I just saw, I just saw the documentary about Clean Flicks, which was this uh, place in Utah that what? sold edited movies to the you know religious contingency there. Clean Flicks, yeah. Is that the best they could do? Mm-hmm. I reveal the twist of that documentary, but you should just watch it for yourself if you're listening. It's on, it was, I it, should. was on, it was on Netflix. <laughs> but, yeah. Clean Flicks on Netflix. Yeah. Who knew? Have you seen Have you seen the riff tracks of Clean Flicks on Netflix? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, God. Hilarious. Uh, soon enough, I'm sure. So, yeah, back to Japanese Batman. I was I was so excited. And it, I like watching uh, movies with Japanese subtitles um, if I've seen the movie already, because I already know what the yeah. dialogue is, and it's, it's yeah. kind of, it's good, it can be good practice. Yes, exactly. Um, but... Unfortunately, I did not get to do that on the latter two movies. That's one of those good tips for just immersion, you know. Yeah. Watch it completely in Japanese if you can. It's just one of those tips. Oh, I, I should watch it with the dub. Yeah, when I was watching uh, Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, I was having fun. I would cycle through the French and Spanish dubs like every 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> Which is, if you know a movie forwards and backwards, that is really fun to do if you already know what all the dialogue yeah. is. We. Oui. Which I do mostly in the like I have most of the Dark Knight memorized because I again I watched it a hundred times. Yeah, uh, not quite there with Dark Knight Rises yet, but it's just it's a lot of fun to just have uh, Commissioner Gordon in French. I love it. We. Oui. It's weird. It's interesting to note that uh, in the French version they gave the Joker this very high whiny sort of voice, but then in the Spanish hmm. version he's all low and and intimidating. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know why. It's, why yeah. would you do that? I had a girlfriend remark once that the English dub of Lupin was surprisingly faithful to the original Japanese voice. Yeah, well, there you go. I are not, uh, neither here nor there. But then in Dragon Ball, Goku's voice is totally different in America. <laughs> I'm just saying it's regular man voicing the character uh, compared to Japanese old lady voicing the character. Wait, what are you talking about? Goku. Oh, yeah. They had a Japanese old lady? Yeah. Well, I mean, she's pretty old now, but yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, you mean kid Goku? No, real... No, both all. What? Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. Well, well, you know what? In Shakespeare's day, they had all the women played by uh, talking horses. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fact. Oh, God. You're slipping with your facts, I gotta say. That's... <laughs> Uh, I say the nay. Jeez. All right, can we get can we go, can we get me out of here? Yeah, please. Could you just just All go, right. just get out? <laughs> well, if anybody is in the Chubu region of Japan, you're welcome to come to all my future uh, TGI effortless <laughs> happenings. Uh, you could make a thing out of it. I mean, I'd maybe like if to. you start that bar, you could do that. How about when I start that bar? I prefer if. Because not because I don't have faith in you, but just because I'm a natural pessimist that way. That's I all. know, and I I don't I don't uh, I don't want you bringing that shit to my house. <laughs> well, I'm not in your house. How about that? Well, your voice is in my head. Uh. Explain the why of that. <laughs> I'm Alex. <laughs> oh God! Now I'm in my own head. <laughs> Alex. Alex. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Get out. Hey, Alex. <laughs> Uh, I crack me up. Yes, you do. <clears throat> I was going to say, speaking of superhero movies, I forgot to mention this last episode, and I apologize. Uh, friend of the show, Scott Lowe, uh, sent me, when we were talking about, I, I was talking about all my um, my X-Men follies. I was watching some of the crappier installments in the series. Yes. Or no, no, I had just watched X2, and I was joking that I was going to go on iTunes after we record and, and watch and buy X3, and that's exactly what I did. Yeah. Uh, Scott Lowe, very kindly, before he knew that I bought it on iTunes, sent me a an X Men Three DVD. <laughs> right. Well, in the mail. Bless his heart. He probably just um, wanted to get rid of it. Well, he said. Well, it was uh, factory sealed. I will say that. <laughs> he said he had it Certainly lying was. around. And uh, yeah, so I thank Scott very much for that. I I actually did have a use for it because uh, to my chagrin, iTunes stuff does not come with bonus features. Uh, it's no, not usually. specifically specifically commentary, yeah. and I'm a big big fan of commentary, and I quite enjoyed uh, watching the commentary, listening to the commentary on that disc uh, before I left for vacation. So thank you, Scott. Well, at least you got something out of X3, right? Yes. Something. Yes, yes, I did. Well, that sounds great, and we all had fun reading all of your tweets about the Dark Knight Rises in its various languages. Oh, there will be more, I assure you. <laughs> there, I I got mo I got the brunt of it to begin with, because you just kept IMing me over and over about the Japanese <laughs> That's right. subtitles and stuff, and it's just like I uh, okay. I I know I know I I, I bring that stuff to Twitter because you know before Twitter, it it was just you. You were my mm -hmm. only outlet for that crap. 
Yeah, I know. Well, it goes both ways, I guess. How's that? There's plenty of stuff that I mostly reserve for you that the public never like sees. Like what? Um, well, well, you know, my, dick my racist epithets, etc. Okay, yeah. I don't like Italians. Again, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah. I don't even know which which group of people banana lizards is supposed to refer to. <laughs> Shit. You shush, I don't know where you, you get know. these things. <laughs> Guava rats? <laughs> well, they could be from guava. That's probably not. Uh, probably I, ju- not. I didn't understand anything you were saying. You said that you you wanted to see them Chef Boyard dead. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear God! Right then. All right, I got enough. Italian. Wait a minute. Hey, wait. Firefox just crashed. What's going on? Oh no! Update ready to install. That's not the same thing. Well, I had some fun this week. Good. What'd you do? I overclocked my computer. Hey! <clears throat> Can we get some sort of applause or nice trumpet going or oh, something? Oh, yeah. You got Hang one on. of those, right? Alex! Alex! No, oh, Alex, no, come Alex, on. Alex, Alex, Alex! All right. I'll take it. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I've had the same sort of computer setup for a while. I built my own computer in, like, 2008 and then didn't really do much with it until now when I realized that I could because I finally read up on the basics of how to overclock it uh, just from the, using the motherboard settings. So I went from like 2.4 gigahertz dual core and up that a full gigahertz. So now I can so run some, some games a little bit better. Okay. This is uh, by is way of a- me also mm-hmm. buying a new uh, fan cooling uh, unit thingy. Are there any games in specific that you are overclocking for? Not, well, sort of, not really. I mean, a lot of them ran okay already, but um, stuff like Sonic Generations would hiccup in places that I didn't like it hiccuping, so that was good to see it smoothed out a bit. Um, And some others that may have had some problems, like uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. And uh, whenever I buy Skyrim for PC in five years, when it's $10 or less. Because that's the problem. See, I originally intended to get Skyrim and then upgrade the computer some way by buying new parts... But that didn't pan out because I'm poor, so I ended up buying it for console, which was not my ideal situation. But I played it anyway, and now I'm just waiting for it to go cheap on PC, <laughs> because now okay. I can run it. I don't mean to sound disrespectful when I say this. No, I think please, it's just go the, ahead. Um, no. Please stop me. Just go. No, I don't need to be talking about this that much. I think you're ugly and rude. <laughs> no. Um, I, it, it seems like a, we have a, this is a very fundamental difference in lifestyle. I, I cannot conceive of... <laughs> Uh, playing so many games, and I I do not mean that in I, uh, as negative as it sounds because I love video games. I, I have many of them, and uh, I you know you know the ones that I'm madly in love with. Yeah, it's okay. This is not news to me. I, I cannot conceive of having so many of them at the same time, playing so many simultaneously. I guess. <laughs> well, I, I don't know about simultaneously. I mean, I can't really use I, my you, feet. Uh, no, I'm, you know what I mean. You just overclock your computer, and then I, you know, I wanted some examples, and you gave me uh, what three, four games, which I guess is is to be expected. But well, I don't the thing know. is, you know, know. Uh, and some of them you already own. Yes. What I didn't, <laughs> I haven't bought Skyrim again yet. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that's right. I said I plan to in a few years. Because the thing is, you know, with this, the sales on Steam, everybody gets a bunch of games that they never play. Because they're all right. like, you know, $10 or less. Or even like, you know, a couple of cents, some of them, sometimes. So I'm not alone in that situation. Um, okay. Yeah, because I, I, I think to me, I still equate current gen games with high prices. Right. And so yeah, PC, I think yeah. I'm I'm not con- yeah I'm not considering the Steam aspect of it. I think yeah, yeah, because a, a large reason I stopped keeping up with new releases, you know, aside from a general lack of interest, is just that new games are way too expensive, yeah. especially in Japan. Well, yeah, I, you're I in paid, Japan where everything is overpriced. I paid almost eight thousand yen for Final Fantasy thirteen on launch yeah. day, and that's a decision I will regret. I will take to my grave. Well, that's okay. You 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 still buy Dragon Quest games to balance it out, so. I do. Oh, it's okay. Everything media-wise is overpriced in Japan. Like, even books, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, man, yeah, I, I was reading, um, especially Blu-rays, 
And I was yeah. reading um, a post. Somebody somebody broke it down uh, and said that the reason that Blu-rays are so expensive in Japan is because companies are just they they're kind of realizing I think that peop- most people are just renting movies um, and not actually collecting movies. Then now they're just mar- they're marketing they're selling only to collectors at this point, which yeah. kind of puts me off. Coming from America, where I can go to Costco and get the Terminator on Blu-ray for eight dollars, which I did, by the way, mm-hmm. a couple years ago. Uh, so it's like you know, I, I was at uh, Big Camera the other day. They had the Avengers on Blu-ray for four thousand yen. Seems a little steep for one movie. Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah, the whole Japanese home video market is just grossly overpriced. It's like it's bubble insane. era prices still, and it yeah. just doesn't make any sense. And uh, it's too bad. Um, I, I then, then looked on games, up. Oh, sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna say. I, I after that, I looked up. Uh, no, standing in big camera, I looked up the Avengers on iTunes on my phone, and it was twenty bucks. So maybe I'll get that. Yeah. I like buying movies, folks. Let me see. I'm, I'm gonna look for my worst Japanese DVD example here, pricing wise. Hold Ooh. on a second. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> I mean, I get the Game Center CX stuff, and that's kind of a lot of money that i mean usually yeah. but i make sure to pre-order when it list, is listed on amazon and it's usually a bit, you know let's say 20 ish bucks cheaper um but i have here a dvd that was listed at 2980 yen so you know approaching 30 dollars let's say yeah uh, oh that's well past 30 dollars it's a single disc dvd open the case and nothing is inside but the dvd <laughs> love it there is, and the, you know, the cover art is just, there's no reversible cover art or anything, so you just get a blank white inside of the case with just the disc, no insert, not even an ad for something else, nothing. And that is also for a 145-minute uh, presentation. Oh, boy. That is in uh, two channels audio, so it's only stereo as well. Not that that makes a huge difference, I guess. You know, when I lived near a Gayo, I would go down there and rent movies all the time. What's Gayo, they had... Alex? Oh, jeez. All right, Gayo. It looks like Geo. It's written. It's G E O, the name of the store. But the katakana below it says Gayo, so I call it Gayo. It's a movie rental place. Um, because I I don't know that Netflix, um, exists in Japan. They probably nope. do. I'm not nope. claiming to be an expert here. What? No, nope. they don't. Something nope. like it though. There's got to be some kind of a comparable service, right? There's Hulu. All right, well, there you go. So I used to rent a lot of movies, and they, it used to be like three or 400 yen to rent one movie. Yeah. And then I think they realized it, that was a little steep for just any movie. Um, and then Blu-rays were even more than that. It was, it's more expensive to rent Blu-rays in Japan, of course. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, they had this sale. I think it was the end of 2009 or 2010. It was supposed to be like this year-end sale. It's like, you know, for this month only, uh, all movies, except new releases, only 100 yen. To rent yeah. for a week, and I'm like, wow, that's that's great. So I would, you know, I could go instead of renting a movie, I would rent like four movies. You know, I ca- I caught up on all these old uh, series that I had been meaning to see. Uh, you know, stuff that I had missed. Like it's, I watched all the Alien movies, all the Rocky movies, um, Die Hard movies, catching yeah. up on on classic action cinema. And then the sale was supposed to end like the first week of the new year, and it didn't, and it just kept going. And I <laughs> think it's like permanent now. Because oh, right. I know it last it lasted for at least another two years. This, so now, this, so now it's basically just a bargain bin. Uh, yeah, for rentals, but it's great. I mean, right. if I had a Gayo near me, I'd be there every weekend renting stuff. Yeah, well, you'll be moving back to the city soon, so that's right. <laughs> Maybe knows? I can enjoy it again. Yeah, <laughs> the wonders of Gayo. Because I was, yeah, I think I rented Alien like at least four or five times. <laughs> and and a, f- a friend said to me, "Why don't you just buy it?" And then um, it's like, "Well, because <laughs> right now I'm only spending five bucks." <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like I don't know if I'm going to watch it 15 more times. Yeah, but of course. Now I own the <laughs> Blu-ray box set. Yeah, well, yeah, that proved that. Yes. <laughs> what were we talking about? Uh, well, we we're talking about like prices of games and stuff, and that you think I'm crazy because I have a bunch of games. Yes, that's it. But originally, I was talking about my computer. And how I'm glad that I finally sort of got a few more, uh, let's say, months out of it. <laughs> That's right. There you. Um, What's it called? Super clocking. Over clocking. Okay. Uber um, clocking. Yeah. The thing is, I still plan on sort of building a new one, you know, with better 
newer stuff and whatnot. But uh, with the onset of things like the Steam Box plan that they're going to come out with sooner or later, you know, that might th- uh, throw some of those plans out of whack. So we'll see what happens. The thing is, I still well, like having a PC just because of the fact that I have all these old games on it as well. And it helps when you're a historian like me. You, you are. access things at will and play them uh, when you need to look something up, let's say. Uh, but also, you know, I still like new PC games just because they are generally cheaper um, and d- d- basically look better than the current console stuff. So, Really? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Well, yeah, I mean, if you do go out and buy the newest video card, let's say, then you're pretty much <laughs> well beyond anything that you can buy at Best Buy for 200 bucks console-wise. Not that I do that anyway. I'm not going to spend $500 on a video card. Just not. No. I don't care how great it is. And I don't care how many blue lights there is inside of this PC case. I'm not fucking buying it. I'm not going to be one of those dudes, okay? Stop looking at me like that. I got you an Alienware. (laughs) (laughs) Will that be okay? I mean, Alienware does have a nice compact size system. And, you know, if you, did, if you did just want to splurge and get that for me as a gift, I'd be totally fine with that. I'll think about <clears throat> Easter's it. Easter's just around the corner. Uh. Huh? Huh? Paisanos! What, What's what? the connection between Paisanos and Easter? I'm saying we're friends. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know? No! I thought, I thought oh, this was a boy. purely professional relationship. So... Let's see, what else can I say about my computer? Well, <laughs> <laughs> how's the start button? I didn't even need any of this, is the thing. It sort of happened uh, happenstantially, if that's a word. I originally needed sure. a new DVD drive because the old one kind of broke. It wouldn't open when you push the button. Something inside broke. Ew. So I had to get a new one of those. So I decided, well, I have a little bit extra money. I can get some RAM because, again, it's an older system and the RAM's a little bit cheaper than the newer stuff. So I did that. Then I put the new RAM in that didn't run right, and I thought it was a processor problem because of things like, I don't know, memory bandwidth compensation or something, whatever. So I said, well, just go ahead and fix it. So I took off the fan of the, the old fan of the CPU, and then I, well, now I need to get a new whole new heatsink thing or some new thermal paste. And so I decided to just go ahead and upgrade the whole thing that way and then overclock it more. The end. Yep. Thank God you played that right at the end. I I have very limited experience um, dealing with computer stuff on I know. the technical side. That's why I'm trying not to talk about it too much. <laughs> I think the only thing I did with your uh, patient guidance was put some uh, RAM that I had purchased for really cheap off of Newegg into a MacBook that I bought. And that was a pain in the ass. Really? I did that? You helped me. Are you sure? Um... Yeah. Oh, well, you no, made how just, long ago? 2006. Oh, okay. No wonder I don't remember then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you were you were lost in a fog. Yeah, hell if I know. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that was terrifying because uh, the first time I took out the, the factory installed RAM and I put in the ones that I had bought and then I started it up and I got, I got this terrifying screen that it couldn't boot because the RAM was loose. And I'm like, oh, fuck, my computer's gone forever. Oh, right, no. <laughs> so then I had to, yeah. So I did, I like, you have to really jam that stuff in there. Yeah, no, a lot of these uh, precautionary things that computers do sound like bad things that will that you will make you think that you broke it. But no, that's yeah. usually not the case. No. There's enough fail-safes these days that, you know, if it gets too hot, it'll just shut itself down, etc. So. Oh, I have experience with that. I had a laptop in college that would uh, overheat and shut off all the time. Yeah. You know what helps with that? Dry ice. Although then it's not as good on your lap. I actually took it back to the Best Buy where we bought it. And I said, this uh, computer keeps overheating and shutting off. Uh, Can you fix it? Like, oh, yeah. So I gave it to them and I came back a week later. And all they had done was just reformat the hard drive. Jeez. Yep. (laughs) Nothing. Like, I turned it on. You should play that Overheated. (laughs) Over... (laughs) Overheated in five minutes and shut off again. I'm just like, fuck this. So I... I put it, I positioned it on top of a grate, like a, I had a little, um, uh, what do you call it? It was like a storage thing, like a mesh metal thing. I, I put it on top of that and then have sure. a fan circulating directly underneath it and that would kind of keep it going. That's cute, yeah. That's like a yeah. ghetto cooling 
pad for that. Yeah. I still couldn't play games on it, but for like you know writing papers or surfing the web, it was fine. Yeah, and now look. Did at I just us. say surfing the web? Do people yeah, still no. say surfing the web? <laughs> no, they do not. What? Are the, okay. <laughs> Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Logging on to the information superhighway. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, all right. Well, I, I've been shamed. Why don't we take a quick break? Yeah, me too. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, let's just take a mutual break. Okay. We'll be back. Oh, this is my favorite feeling. Oh, fragments are healing. Oh, this is my favorite feeling. Heart still beating. Dear John, started out a sad song, but I moved. For a sec, I had lost all feeling since my lifeline reeling for you, drowning in words and meaning still. Heart not beating, strange doctor of my own mental health. I tried to breathe life back into myself by myself, by myself, by myself. Folks are back. It's no more whoppers. I'm Ray Barnhold, and that's Alex over there. I'm Alex. Uh. <laughs> Now, as long as I'm talking about computers, Alex, did you see this uh, Qualcomm press event from the CES show? No. What's going on? Well, now it'll be a couple of weeks old and out of the uh, zeitgeist, let's say. But um, The webosphere. There was just this hugely embarrassing, bad keynote press event thing that opened up CES this year, the Consumer Electronics Show. And um, traditionally, Microsoft had done it in all the years prior. But this time, Microsoft bowed out, and now it was Qualcomm who makes, you know, various chips and stuff. So this put on this really cringeworthy uh, event, this presentation thing with all these crazy, stupid actors in it. And, um, you know, like I said, by now it's a little bit out of everybody's radar, but it is pretty hilariously bad. And it's like, it's just like the production quality juxtaposed with how bad it was was really astounding to me. Because, you know, sometimes you'll uh, hear about these things around E3 when somebody else comes out with a super embarrassing press conference or something like that. But this was on like a whole new level just based on the production quality of it all. And just that wrapped up with um, really forced, weird gamer stereotypes. and Oh, I love those! Crazy give me, give me, give me some uh, specifics. Well, the whole, I guess, uh, crux of it was... Uh, well, rather, the slogan behind it was Born Mobile. And so they brought up these three actors posing as different stereotypes of young people who are connected a lot in their daily lives, you know, or what have you. <sighs> so it was just this uh, really uh, perky, sort of annoying girl. Didn't have much to her. But then she brought out her two friends, let's say. And oh, it was boy. This, um, guy in a hoodie who was a self professed gamer, and he made all these corny jokes about his girlfriend and how hot she was. And then, you know, okay. you know, we used words like pwned, uh, for example. No, no. And then uh, her other friend was this uh, this, uh, this uh, business guy who also used a lot of weird platitudes and lingo and annoying phrases and things to describe his mobile lifestyle. And uh, one of the other things was that uh, while they were doing this, they were using these you know, these huge hand swipe motions to like move things that were on the screen behind them, you know, just like using those transitions. And it was just this uh. weird sort of crazy, embarrassing performance art mixed with that kind of thing. And it's just well beyond anything that say Ubisoft ever put on at E3. So, Oh man. Yeah. That was on, that was, that was hitting the web this uh, week. Really this I, week, uh, recording yeah. week. How could anybody, well, maybe it's just me, I can't take, seri- I could not take seriously anybody speaking to me in earnest about their quote-unquote mobile lifestyle. Right. Well, that like, is, <laughs> that's the thing with a lot of these companies is that they'll put on these press events and it just demonstrates how utterly out of touch they are, yeah. which is not what they should be doing because, you know, if Qualcomm's not like a badly performing company or anything, they should know better. <laughs> you know they should not I brought up Ubisoft and I was specifically thinking of a couple years ago at E3 they had their presentation it was hosted by a guy called Mr. Caffeine and he was usually I guess his main line of work was doing like a peppy sort of um, what is the damn word he would go into companies and do like you know peppy presentations to try and get people motivated and whatnot. and he was just this weird crazy elaborate yeah. annoying jackass I've heard that name, and I may have seen some clips on YouTube, right. yeah, Mr. Yeah. Caffeine. Yeah, no doubt you can if you just search him. 
And so you take a guy who's mostly relegated to, let's say, you know, offices, and then you put him on a uh, worldwide stage, and it just falls all apart, and it just goes completely badly, and nobody likes it, and they all want to leave and get out of there. And it just demonstrates a total lack of understanding. But it is also very hilarious, and you should definitely see all these things on the internet. If you can stand it, because sometimes I can't, but yeah. I'm a social media manager. Yeah. Well, you you are for this show. Not really. You're the one that posts things on Twitter. You're the one that talks to people. Sometimes. Yeah. You're Alex. I'm... Wait. Yeah. You are the face of No More Whoppers. Um... No More Whoppers. There it is. (laughs) See, I think you should do some motivational speeches, perhaps. Okay, give me a topic. Um, well, I think you're really good at this one. I'm Alex. Can you be more specific? Like, pretend that you're the audience and I'm trying to rile you up and uh, motivate you. What's the topic at hand? Well, I don't know. I guess it would have to be related to the show. So let's just say, uh, um, trying to get us to listen to No More Whoppers. Okay. <laughs> hey, all you guys. I heard Mailman. Uh, I... <laughs> Delivery for your ears. It's called No More Whoppers. <laughs> it's a podcast that I do with my bestest friend. His name's Ray. Uh, I'm Ray. Little more and energy. we we talk uh, we talk about sometimes games, things that happen in our lives, uh, things that happen in our lives, a lot current events. Um, I would say I'm taking her in, but then she sounds like a pair of pants. That's how I do. <laughs> That's fine. Let's just move on. Okay. <laughs> you go next. You know what the problem is? I don't care! Yeah. All right. No. Uh, you know, I, I went out uh, last, I think I talked about this last week, and I went out in Nagoya for my, my first time back in uh, 2013. That's right. And I met up with an old friend, James. Not Irish James. This is English James. There's two Jameses in my life. I've only got room yeah. for two. Um, Both from like, that part of the world. Yeah. And I, uh, let's wind the clock back to about uh, 2010, I think it was. Let's go or, back to yesterday. Little farther than yesterday, Randy. Uh, spring 2010. I just started teaching as an ALT. It was, my, it was my first real job in about a year and a half. I was unemployed for a while, kind of um, just doing private lessons uh, for, for my monies. Yeah. And then I got a real job with, you know, monthly pay. And I was so excited to get my first paycheck. And I, I was out with some friends drinking and enjoying the evening. And, and English James was there. And he's like, hey, Alex, I've got a d- I, I've, I've loaned him money before in the past. I would, uh, he's like, I've got a date. Can you spot me 5,000 yen? I'll say sure thing, and it's never been a problem because he's always paid me back like the next week. Mm-hmm. And like this time, it's like I got money to spare. So he's like, hey, Alex, I've got a big date tonight. Uh, can I borrow 10,000 yen? And I, I know he's good for it. So I'm like, you know what? I want you to have a great time. I'm so excited from getting my first real paycheck. I'm going to spot you 20,000 yen. So I handed him 20,000 yen. Wow. And he had a great time. Um, and then some things happened where he was involved in a, in a, a motorcycle accident and he was in the hospital for a long time and then he was deported back to England for a long time, say a few years. Um, and he finally, he's back in Japan now living in Nagoya again. And I, I saw him, uh, last weekend when we were out drinking Wow! and he, uh, repaid me, uh, Holy shit. 10,000 yen. He gave, he oh. said he doesn't have uh, all of it yet, but he gave me 10,000. So I was uh, I was very impressed that he uh, A remembered and B actually gave me some money. Yeah. That sounds so. like a very good person. Yes. Well, you'd be surprised. Well, just based on that better than, you know, let's say okay. 70% yeah. of the world's population. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was pretty impressed. Um, now, few people things are, are happening. very good at that, is what I mean. Wait a minute. What, what do you mean by you people? No, very few. Oh, Jesus. What do you mean? By, wait a minute. What do you mean by few people? Look just like that dancing one. I don't even dance. <laughs> We've been over this. Some smart ass New York Jew. <laughs> no, okay. You're, it's not even accurate. <laughs> it's one out of three. <laughs> or maybe, maybe two out of three. Okay. 
folks, things are happening locally. All right, let me give you let me give you the schedule. <laughs> let me tell you what's news. happening in Kota. <laughs> um, tomorrow, Ray, <laughs> I'm attending the 16th annual Kota Kite Festival. Oh wow! I know. Huh. Yeah, it seems like the right season for that. Well, you know, it's it is good cape weather, cool, breezy. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> but, uh, it's but it kind of windy, though, right? I mean, no, yeah, that's the thing it, I would I would expect in the fall, really. Is it is it like twice a year? No, I don't know. Well, it could be, but uh, I was invited by the vice principal of one of my schools. Um, usually, I'm uh, I'm not very <laughs> so jazzed. Invite only. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I got to bring a business card too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, usually I'm not so jazzed about going to school functions on the weekends. Um, yeah. but, but hey, kites. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But right. hey, that's what it said on the, on the, <laughs> <headed me. laughs> but hey, kites. <laughs> no, um, it's only three hours long and it starts at 10 a.m. instead of like, you know, seven or 8 a.m., which, you know, the yeah. talent show was. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. That sounds like fun. But then right, next then. weekend, I got the musical. I finally I bought my ticket for the uh, the town musical that uh, several of my students are in. I'm very excited for that mm-hmm. actually. Well, is it? Do we know what it is, or is it just? It's the called. Musical that's it's called year. Goodbye Bluebird. Okay. So I'm I'm hoping it's not like the you know that dance troops thing where it let's string together a bunch of weird. Uh, mm-hmm. unassociated dance numbers into what can be passed off as a story. I think this is actually written from the outset as a performance, like an actual musical. Well, prepare your Van Halen radar. I'm doing my best. It's called Goodbye Bluebird. Um, well, technically it's called Sayonara Bluebird. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's the Japanese title of uh, Bye Bye Birdie. I kind of hope it is. <laughs> Could be. Uh, yeah. yeah. I like Bye Bye Birdie. I was uh, I was in the pit <laughs> orchestra in high school when we performed that play. It was a uh, musical. That was fun. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know anything about... Hang on. Let me, let me, I, got the, I got the poster right here. Hang on. All right. Or the, um, I got... It's uh, not a poster. It's so like a... What do flyer? You say? It's, it's like an... Yeah, yeah. Flyer. There we go. So it's A4 <laughs> sized. Here we go. Uh, it says, Kota Musical 2003. Goodbye, Bluebird. And then it's got these five kids standing at the bottom, looking up into the clouds and smiling. Oh, and yes. there's, there's a boy in like a black t-shirt. There's nondescript girl A, nondescript girl B. And then there's a Yankee looking dude with like a, a jacket and, and a lot of hair gel going on. Mr. And then there's Black. the little girl. What's that? Mr. Black. Thank you. <laughs> and then there's the, the girl who gave me the flyer uh, at the bottom. And then it gives you the info when and where and how much and yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's, wait, there's a back that, to yeah. it? Oh wait, it has a cast listing. Well, let's descript these nondescript people. All right. Uh Nakagawa Junko's in it. Uh yeah, awesome. Know. Wait a minute, I think it's got a summary or something on it. Hang on. Wait a minute. Love and happiness more. <laughs> Love Happiness Academy. Something about a love happiness academy. <laughs> this has been X and Ten. Culture festival. <laughs> Shut up. Culture festival. Uh, prepared preparations have been finished. Being prepared to perform. So I'm Throughout asking this. Thir- <laughs> Two people. Th- <laughs> <laughs> uh, third graders. A couple of third graders and classmates and names are Minami and Kinta and various things happen <laughs> and after school <laughs> after school the school some, they leave school and go to another world. Sachi and them uh, <laughs> I don't know how else to say Sachi Tachi <laughs> Sachi and them um, they go to in a mysterious place called a school so school gate? What? <laughs> and they find a thing. And there... Some the school gate. Here. It's a blue child. It was a blue child. This story is uh, <laughs> a story of happiness. Well then, I'm asking you. <laughs> anyway, very excited for this musical, as you can see. <laughs> oh yeah, I can hear it in your voice. No, I really am. 
There you go. Now I can hear it. You got to support those. You got to support kids. Otherwise, they will grow up to kill you. Yeah. You still haven't seen First Class yet. (laughs) (laughs) It's one of the main themes. If you don't support a child, they will grow up and kill you. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Well, at least tell me how the kites go. I will. Usually up. (laughs) Oh. If Sorry. photography is allowed, I'll take some pictures. <laughs> yeah, because you know, know in Japan, Japan, yeah, yeah, you're not allowed <laughs> to take photos of celebrities. I don't know if some of these kites are revered as celebrities or not. Yeah, <clears throat> I like whenever a celebrity is ever photographed <laughs> in Japan. It's like yeah. a, the hugest deal in the world, and it usually means that their career is over. Oh no! Because usually it's someone who uh, is shown with their girlfriend or boyfriend, and then that becomes a firestorm for some reason. Oh, yeah. Um, because I've noticed that in Japan, you either you never know if anybody usually has a girlfriend or boyfriend. They're either single or suddenly married with child, <sighs> married and pregnant. That's how, you know, that's how I see it, as, from observing sorts of bits of entertainment news here and there over the years. You know, that was the title of the Married with Children pilot, Married <laughs> but Pregnant? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, it's the prequel. Yeah. Yeah. They, still. <laughs> Instead of sitcom reunion movies, they should do sitcom prequel movies. I'm going to be all outside. Mary and Rhoda, the early years. For example. Freddy, penis. Alex, you still right. there? Uh, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> all right, everybody, here's Alex. <laughs> One more thing. <laughs> yes. Um, this is not exciting, and I don't like it when we talk about food, but I think this has to be said. For right. uh, th- throughout December, well, parts of November. Is it? No. Um, there were two flavors of chips in my local convenience store, and these oh. were fantastic chips. Okay. Yeah. Raymond, you may recall Happy Cheese. Yes. And Happy Butter. <laughs> yes, of course. These are fantastic flavors. Now, I'm not, you know, cheese is okay, butter's okay. The thing that made these chips awesome is that they both had honey, they had a honey flavoring to them. Ooh. It was like a, a lot of honey, and then for the happy cheese, a little bit of cheese. Happy butter was a lot of honey and a little bit of butter. They were both <laughs> just amazing, because I like uh, honey in uh, salted foods I sure. or uh, savory foods. There's a restaurant near my old apartment that used to make a honey almond pizza that was awesome. It's Italian. Yes. I don't like Italians. <laughs> it, it was just um, like a plain white pizza with almonds on it, and then they served it with a bowl of honey that you just drizzle on however you like. It was that, really good. That is progressive. Yes. Because I purchased... I still, yeah, I don't think we've gotten past ranch and marinara sauce here yet. No, so. I don't think America will ever get past no, those. No, maybe not. Um, I purchased the very last bag of Happy Butter last week. The Happy Series has completed its run, <laughs> at least in this market. Has it really? Or is it just like yes. need restocking? I don't, they usually don't let it get that uh, low, lowly, lowly stocked unless right. they're planning on just letting it run out. Just like, uh, just like when I lived in Nagoya, the convenience store had this delicious banana chocolate milk. Uh huh. It was awesome. It was, yeah, uh, it was in this little yellow carton with a gorilla on it, and he's <laughs> drinking the car. It was a re- well, recursive racist. packaging. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, re- recursive packaging I'm a big fan of He's drinking his own product And you look closer on that <laughs> He's drinking Yeah, anyway right. And that was delicious yeah. And Isn't then this just some monkey catching action? I sort of think you are mistaken somehow And then I would, I would get it Every time I was in there And that should be sending a message To the company or the supplier Somebody, hey, this is really popular It's, it's selling out all the time Yeah But then they just discontinue it It's yeah. like What is the point of, mm. of selling a thing If you don't like that it's popular that is actually <clears throat> same thing happens at trader joe's if you've ever been there they no. have well once they with will, you yes <laughs> they will introduce some crazy good item that you will be devoted to and then suddenly it's gone after like a m- couple of months or so why so i mean many things they do keep there and they're, they're all pretty good too but they'll introduce you know some crazy delicious type of cookie or something and it's just you love it, and you want more of it, and all of a sudden it's gone. I had the same thing happen with uh, mint chocolate milk, which is also delicious. Mm-hmm. Same deal. 
just I, I love it. I buy it all the time. Uh oh, the stock is out. Guess we better replace it with something. No, I bought it every time. <laughs> you have a surefire hit, and you're you're changing it out for something else yeah. that I won't buy. It's almost as if uh, different customers have different tastes. <laughs> who, who knew, right? Yeah. Oh, well. Well, here's what I think of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've told you my exploits on the show of eating uh, uh, soon-to-be-discontinued food items like those beef jerky yes. chips from years ago. Yeah. And that uh, now, Wolfgang Puck coffee that exploded, self-exploding coffee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's You know what? I think it's convenient that we finally have foods that explode on their own. Yes. Because, <laughs> you know, you take all this time. Let's, yeah, like. You bring out the arc welder and you light it a flame and it takes yes. forever. And eventually let's just, you're just like, ugh, there has to just, be a better way. Let's just remove this step from the process and save yeah. me time. If only there were some sort of pull tab system that would release glycerin into the product. <sighs> yeah. I love uh, if you ever buy a can of Guinness in a convenience store. They come with these little nitrogen balls in them that activate when you open the can. Because mm-hmm. I guess you can't uh, you can't keep Guinness, you know, all uh, sealed up like that and retain the flavor. I don't know how it works. I'm not a beerologist, but um, I that's love like it. that soda though, right? Japanese soda, Ramune. Ramune, yeah, Ramune is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, here's a spokesman. Here's a spokesman for Ramune. You'll get your chance in a moment. I'm still speaking. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 2016. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Ramune and Pocky. <laughs> Bill Pocky. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, wither happy butter. They're gone. Replaced, yeah. not replaced, but um, I've tried a new flavor today, and it did not, did not uh, pass muster. I'm talking, of course, about Consomme Punch Special. <laughs> so I hope it was a mustard one. I was hoping after you said that. God damn it! It's not mustard. I know, but I know. I wish you would have after that. That would be that would be great, though. I like uh, I like mustard stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah. For for some reason, Consomme is a very very popular chip flavor in Japan. Yes, uh, and I'm uh, drawing a blank on exactly what Consomme is. It's uh, I believe it's just a kind of soup or broth, as far as I know. E- okay. Uh, and it's it's okay, but it's a little too rich for my taste. The the consomme punch special had a nice tang to it, but it was just it was it was a little bit over the top. I mean, mm-hmm. let's be honest here. I don't want that. I want happy butter. I want happy cheese. They should have more soup flavored chips. I like Italian wedding chips. Okay, yes, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, I know you want me to play a drop, but I'm not going to. So I'm just saying they should make that flavor. So it's up to me then, is it? I guess so. R E hand job. All right. <laughs> not, <laughs> not your best. Um, I'm sorry. What do you want from me? <laughs> something relevant to what was dis- being discussed. Okay. Uh, Jesus. Uh, chips. 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 Okay. I'll, uh, I'll take these chips, please. That it's... Alex, you're just talking. That wasn't a drop. But sir, don't you know that these chips Alex. are terrible? You're a cashier. All right, fine. You drug it out of me. When you're here, you're family. Uh, oh, fuck! <laughs> uh, my new number one favorite. You know what? Um, that sounds too much like it's part of the audio of the show. I think we should uh, specify to people. I was playing around with uh, unpacking <laughs> GarageBand file contents the other day, and I pulled this clip of me from an from another show. This was not made as a drop. I just pulled this as it was from a GarageBand file. Here it is. Uh, oh, fuck! <laughs> and it's now become a priceless drop. <laughs> Alex. Yeah. Yes, it has. Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> Just the panic in my voice. Is something has <laughs> clearly gone wrong. Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's oh, God. a keeper. Um, Alex, what's going on? <laughs> well, <laughs> Jesus. One uh, more thing. <laughs> well, I can talk about snacks. Okay, please do. <laughs> I went back. <laughs> I went back to chicken and a biscuit. Haven't had those in Ooh. a little while. Very good. Still, a, an American I classic. I don't know that I've had those. Do they taste like chicken? Uh, not necessarily. They just taste really good. I guess it's just of, a crack. It's a cracker, right? 
Yeah, but it has a it has a dusting of powder on it that's kind of mm, well, I guess as long as we're talking about soup, it does kind of a chicken noodle soup broth ish tang to it. Okay. Can I try sort one? Of, I can't really describe describe it that well. Yeah, you can have one. Come here. Okay. Oh, what well, that's delicious. Yeah. Like I said, an American classic. That's us. <laughs> that's Italian. That's an Italian classic. Yeah. Well. <laughs> All right. Go, move, moving on. Yeah. I like a game called Chrono Trigger. Oh, yep. Well, you know that uh, I haven't bought a new 3DS yet. So I've been trying to uh, go through all my DS games and <clears throat> find something that's suitable Time to is play. Ticking. I know. You know. Find something that's suitable to play, you know, at night during uh, futon times. And I started, uh, I, th- yeah. I think I'm going for all the endings in Chrono Trigger DS. I- I'm second guessing this now because this is not interesting to talk about. I just want the world to know. I've, um, I'm about uh, seven or eight endings out of, I think, 12 or 15 yeah. total. Wait a minute, I've got a guide open right here. Uh, yep, there's 13 endings total. Although the guide uh, says bad ending counts as an ending, but I guess it really doesn't. Anyway. It says uh, ending in it. Time travel. Yeah, but on, for number it says uh, N-A. Okay. Look, the guy who even wrote the guide says, I don't really call this an ending, but some people included it on early SNES lists. If you lose any fight against Lavos except no. in the Ocean Palace, you see Lavos coming out of the earth and the command center in the future collapses. <clears throat> now you are you well now you're double reminding me of this uh speed run marathon that's going on right now. <clears throat> What's going on? It's a charity drive, but it's a week long live stream of guys just speed running all these games that they're already experts on. Um all sorts of classic games and you know, retro and not so retro. Um, oh, Chess but the Master? whole community—it's it, kind of funny to me because the whole community is basically just a bunch of wiry white guys in their twenties. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you talking about Chrono Trigger and stuff reminded me of that. Wait, you say playing. Chrono Trigger? Yes, instinctively, and I apologize. I think, okay, I think we've had no, this you, conversation before. Yes, actually. we have. You got to. <laughs> okay. Well, you don't say Baku no Natsu Yasumi, do you? No. I used to yeah, be much there. worse as a kid. And I think I've talked about this and maybe on some oh, other uh, podcast. I think we all have. Yeah, I think everybody has uh, fun no, no, mispronunciations. No, no, no. Uh, hold on. What? I thought Chocobo was Kokobo. Oh, that's interesting because um, Brad always said Kookaboo. Yeah. Whatever, I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea where that came from. but yeah. I always said Chocobo. <laughs> really? Yes. Well, then, I guess we're in and the same then, boat. And then, uh, you know, I heard it, I think, for the first time in Final Fantasy X, actually spoken. I was like, oh, shit, I guess that's what it is. Yeah, I think it was the same with me. But anyway, I sort but of yeah, got um, that because of Chrono Trigger. Like, that's Chrono how I Trigger. that word. It's... <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> Sorry. You get your you. chance in a moment. I'm still speaking. I should take that filter off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could you? Uh, there we go. You'll get your chance in a moment. I'm still speaking. No, I was done with my point. Yes. So. Well, hang on. I'm, I'm, I'm curious about... Um, I love, you know, childish mispronunciations. Uh, I and pretty much most of my friends played Ninja Gaiden as kids, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't, I th- I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure I pronounced that correctly. Because you saw the wizard? Oh, Is that why? No, in the wizard it was like Gaiden. No, I thought it was Gaiden. Gaiden? No, no. <clears throat> Watch that movie. You're talking to the scholar on that movie, man. Yeah, Come on. I know. All right. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I know. Hey, I know everything about that movie. I know um, that that kid, the, the kid who's played by Ken Salvage. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, uh, what else about that? No. Uh, 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 well, Jalico. I was trying to. Oh yeah. I always said Jalico. Yeah. I still sort of, when I still sort of read it fast in my head, I'll just sort of say Jailco. J- you you called it Jailco? I still sort of do, just like instinctively, but I know it's really jelly. Don't they don't they build prisons? No, it's what does that mean? <laughs> Jailco. Oh, Jailco. Yeah, sorry. Oh, come on, Ray. very cute. Thank you. Uh, uh oh, Doctor Robot Nick. <laughs> yeah, that was a real one. <laughs> yeah, I probably did that too. How was I supposed to know it's Robotnik? Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know the word robot. I know the word robot, so he was Robotnik. Yeah, yeah you're right. 
Um, uh, another game company, Enix. Yeah, I, I always mean, said Enix. Well, I think it is supposed to be Enix. Yeah, it is. You're right. Yeah, yeah. in Japanese, it is Enix. Yeah. But the problem is, you know, they write these things out in Roman letters, and it just yeah. naturally seems like Enix to some of us. Streets of Raj? No, okay. <laughs> the Hindu version. <laughs> oh, God. Um, you knew it was coming. I would just take, you know, easily pronounceable names. And I was going to. I was going to. I was so what close to do? doing it, but what then I decided do? not to. What were you going to do? I was going to be like a Squaresoft or something. <laughs> Crusader of Kenty? <laughs> <laughs> I could do this all day. <laughs> it's fun. Well, you know, there's that game, uh, The Magic of Scheherazade. Yeah. Like, how could you possibly be able to pronounce that as an under 10-year-old, you know? Yeah. Plus, it had, plus even the logo was confusingly written, so... You know, yeah, it was very out, stylized. So. It was, it was yeah. hard to read. Uh, what else we got here? There's another uh, There's another Jailco game, Astyanax. I always said Astyanax. Yeah, I think you are actually supposed to add that extra syllable in there. S-T-N-X. Oh. I'm not a fan of that. No. Well, blame the Greeks. Thanks, Greeks. Thanks a lot, Greek Obama. Oh, uh, speaking of thanks, Obama, they finally uh, sucked all the humor out of that. How? Uh, by making gifts of like those uh, oh. black and white infomercial clips. I saw, I love those. I think those are hilarious. No, no. We Doesn't clearly differ. Me. We Doesn't clearly differ on some key issues. Totally weak. No, I disagree. That doesn't work. No, wait. That's... The best one. The best one is. N- it's not a thanks Obama. It's the one where the guy knocks the thing of like Cheetos off his table, and it, you, what, in the commercial, it just hits the floor and he throws his hands up. <laughs> but <laughs> somebody made it so that uh, he knocks the Cheetos off the table and it falls through a portal in the floor <laughs> and it just comes out of the ceiling and hits him in the head. But <laughs> see, the that's way that clever. He's... What? That's clever. Yes, but it, but it's sold because the way that he moves his arms, he just got this ball in the face, but he's moving his arms like nothing happened. I think it's funny. Yeah, <clears throat> that's clever. What's not clever is just slapping thanks Obama on that and calling it funny. I think it is funny. Well, you have severe problems that we need to discuss. No, I don't. We have different ideas of humor. We have different senses of humor. I feel like uh, you and I, I'm we out. have... The, we thank you. We have this very uh, concentrated sort of dovetail area where we love the same kinds of comedy, but yeah. then we also, you know, in in this Venn diagram, we have our own little segments of humor that we do not share with each other. Yep, yeah, we do, and that's why and, I hate uh, you. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, as long as you're being honest. Yes. No, it, it's fascinating. We have this thin little line. <clears throat> yes. I just I am I have a very low tolerance for what a lot of what the internet calls funny. That's all. Yes, you do. I think that's just because you hate people in general. Well, it's not my and fault. You don't, a lot of it I, comes from the internet and from hateable people. Well, no, I think you hate them because you don't want to be associated with them. You don't want to be associated in any sure way with anybody who is on the internet. I don't know. I never thought of it that way. Because you you're afraid you you think it makes you pedestrian and stupid and you don't want to be a part of it. Yeah, I guess so. I'm Dr. Alex. But it oh, doesn't uh, change the fact that there's a lot of unfunny stuff on the internet. I'm listening. Yeah, no, you're right. A lot of unfunny crap on the internet. My biggest complaint is when people take uh, perfectly fine photos of something that is funny and then make it a motivational thing. Yes, like, well, we've we, discussed we, that. Yeah, I don't um, need you to uh, point out the joke, okay? I'm not an idiot. Yeah, that's just... It's it, It's just this, it's, it's this culture of... Uh, just kids, you know, under 22, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> just trying to compose all this stuff and creating all these crappy memes. And yeah, whatnot. I've, um, I was, and it's um, not getting any better. That? I was, uh, exchanging tweets with our good friend Michael Murazuzuko. We're, we're, we're both kind of reading the, uh, post funny pictures thread in Gaff in tandem. And, um, a small percentage of those is pretty funny. Sure. Um, I'll give but you the that. majority. The majority of it is the stuff that we we do not like. Uh, no, the funniest one, the the one that just destroyed me was um, there was a lineup of athletes at some event and they were standing in ascending order of height, and there was the one guy was really short on one end, the other guy was really tall on the mm-hmm. other end, 
and somebody just put the Animorphs logo on it. <laughs> yeah, I did see <laughs> and that. It just killed, it <laughs> killed me like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's clever, but it also it. I don't know. It runs it's, the risk of being overdone if something else like that ever happened. Yes. Yeah, I agree that if you start oversaturating with that stuff, it gets less funny. But I mean, it's it's fine to find that stuff funny. I think when there's not a lot of it out there. And in this thread, there's like people are trying to post funny pictures, um, and then if if something is funny, but also there's something technically wrong with it, somebody has to point that out and uh, quote unquote spoil the fun. You know what I mean? And this right. can go either two ways. If it's something that doesn't matter, it's like well, you're you're pointing out something that's trivial. The image is still funny regardless. And uh, what happens then is that somebody responds to them with the classic image of um, the robot pushing down the sign that says, no fun allowed. Like, you know, (laughs) how dare you find fault in this picture that's making me laugh? You don't have to find fault in everything, you idiot. Right. But sometimes those people are right. The people who who are calling out the pictures. Like, there was a picture of, like, girls on Facebook with thermometers in their mouths. And it said, here we are testing out these thermometers in our health class. And then somebody on Facebook replied to them, uh, those are rectal thermometers. And, like, that's the whole point of the image is that these dumb girls are putting rectal thermometers in their mouth. But somebody, somebody rightly noticed uh, and commented in the thread, no, jackass, those are oral thermometers. <laughs> like, this is, it's not funny because the guy's not right. He's just pulling shit. He's trying to be funny. He's pulling shit uh, out of his ass, pun intended. And it's, it's, well, that's one of my greater annoyances. Is I know, but then, the but then, yeah. jackasses will still reply to that guy who calls yeah. who calls out the image with the no fun allowed picture. Like, yeah. no, you're missing the point. He's he's the original thing is flawed. It's not yeah. funny, however you look at it. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, yeah, that's one of those worst examples from. Why has everybody kind of left the building? I, <laughs> Our right. audience is empty. Left the building. All right, now there's just two of us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's get let's get this over with. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Yes. We had a pact. <laughs> uh, were you going to say something? Um, not really. Just that I agree with things that you say. Not How about everything. if I say? Oh, damn it! Okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah. No. Don't bring up that Obama thing again. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> It's sad, but uh, let's have a moment of silence for the thanks Obama joke. Gabagool. (laughs) There we go. All right. Uh, We're going to take a quick break, I think. Uh, Sure. All right. And then we're going to be right back. We've got fan fun. Yay. Brenda and Eddie were the popular steadies and the king and the queen of the farm. Riding around with the car top down. Nobody looks any finer Always more of a hit at the Parkway Diner We never knew we could want more than that out of life Sean, Bender and Eddie would always know how to survive Oh, 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 oh. It's No More Whoppers, I am Ray Barnold, that is Alex Fraley Hi, it's me Yeah, oh boy, and it's time for Fan Fun Fan fun. Fan fun. Fan fun theme goes here. I don't think we have one. We have like one theme for one of these things. And... Hey, if anybody else wants to chip in. Um... Okay. You got a friend in me. No, that is not the theme for fan fun. <laughs> well, okay. Jeez, you don't have to yell about it. Uh, oh, fuck! <laughs> What right. nothing didn't have you. Thanks, Randy. Uh, we got a donation this week, and we, we are very uh, thankful to this person. <laughs> it was actually an 11th hour donation. Uh, I was uh, planning not to do a donor segment this episode because we didn't have any donations this week. And then like <sighs> half an hour before we recorded, check my mail, and it says we got a donation from a Mr. Robert Schof. Of the Flying Schofs. Yeah, well, Schofs, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, ten seconds on the clock. Ironically, right. not a chauffeur. No. All, All right, right Raymond. Whenever you're ready. Of course, I'm ready. 
right about now. So go. All right. His purpose. I really enjoy your podcast. Thank you, Robert. Hey, what kind of a name is Shof anyway? Shof? Or is it, sh- is it Showaf? Is it Showoff? Robert Showoff. All right. Keep it in check, Robert. Uh, thank you very much. We're going to put that money to some kind of use. The new version of a game called Dragon Quest. Mm-hmm. I told you, time is ticking. Dragon Quest Seven's almost out. Wait, isn't it out next month? That, does that, is that not good enough for almost? That's not, no, dude, time Jeez. is ticking is like next weekend, not next month. I'm speaking in relative terms, okay? It's not like it's coming out in December and I said, oh, it's almost out, Alex, you better save up. No, I know. It's, it's just in fucking February. Less than a but, month. But, uh, wait, when is 7th Dragon 2022, I think, is out in either February or March. I think March. Mm, anyway. Played full, buddy. I know. I'm excited, though, you know? I like my portable gaming lifestyle. My, my mobile lifestyle, you know. <laughs> yes. Born mobile. Uh, thank you, Robert. We have Facebook likes this week. Um, Raymond, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. All right, here oh, we go. Oh, oh, yes. Fighters Mega Mix Sidonis. That's, that's it. That's, that's it? Oh. Yeah. We're down to <laughs> well, one. I don't We're know down. what that meant. <laughs> We're down. His name is Mick Sidonis. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Sinotis. All right. <laughs> he, he, gets, he gets built twice. Well. <laughs> so uh, he became Fighters Mega Mix Sidonis. Sinotis. Uh, fuck. A bit of a slow week. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mick Sensodyne. We appreciate it. Um, we could use some more. <laughs> I lights. like that one better. Damn it! <laughs> well, it's too late now. Could you try and do like three alternates? <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, hang on. Let's do it again. Since we only have one, let me just do it in different ways. All right, <laughs> sure, let's do it again. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Keep this in. All right, here we go. Facebook likes. Fighters Mega Mix Sidonis. Fighters Mega Mix Sinotis. No. And for your sensitive teeth. Mick Sensodyne. No. We're going to be staging an attack on Mick Cyberdyne Industries. <laughs> uh, all right, now I got nothing. All right, good. Well, feel free to stop the show and do another. Wait, idea. wait. An anagram of his last name is Ease Dinos. <laughs> <laughs> and his first name is a racial epithet. I think the anagram stuff is part of the savant part of your brain. I don't know. It's not, it's not hard to do. <laughs> it is for me. Hey, Ray, the anagram of mega is mage. Okay. I'm Alex. And is there, hang on. I've, I've always been confused about this. Does an anagram necessarily have to uh, form a word or description, something that has roughly the same meaning as that name? Or can it just be any anything at all that makes sense? Um I don't know 100%. I would think technically it could be anything. Okay. I, I would hope so. And if, if there's a different think, name for that, then yeah. I'd like to know what it is. Because that's what I do. I'm not smart enough to do the one that actually makes a description of that person. Right. I think you would get extra genius points if you did. Yes. Yes. Genius bar. The, yeah. <laughs> Which is an anagram of... Never mind. Um, <laughs> genie Srab. It's, it's okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we have over nerds. Got a wooden sword, and the real one cost me three grand. Now I'm saving up for a third. My car is a Decepticon. Pretty sure I'm from Nippon. I'm an over nerd. Over nerds, stories of extreme nerdery, both around you or in you. Yes, uh, or through you. Yes. Uh, this first one comes from a Sam Lowe, whom you may know from Sam's Club and Lowe's. Uh, he's, he's doing Any pretty, relation to Scott Lowe? pretty well for himself. I don't know. I wondered that. I'm, I'm going to say yes, because they, the they're Lowe's both brothers. Lowe's. Uh, they might be brothers. The Flying Lowe's. The, fl- <laughs> the Flying Lowe's. Those damn Lowe's take home the trophy every year. <laughs> the B-sharps. <laughs> Perfect. The yeah. B- Okay. Um, Sam says, hello, sirs. As a college student, I've been able to observe many awesome and uh, not so awesome nerd moments over the past few years. However, one nerd caught my particular attention while listening to the overnet section of your podcast. Coincidence? I think not. Anyways, I was walking home from class and saw what appeared to be a guy in a Mario shirt carrying an iPad and didn't think much of it until I started to hear music. 
Well, it wasn't just any music. It was the main theme to Super Mario Brothers. I had to pause your podcast at this moment in order to investigate. Upon further review, this guy was wearing a Mario t-shirt for sure and was carrying an iPad with YouTube open and was playing a video with the Super Mario Brothers theme music playing without headphones in. This guy was literally just walking around blasting the Super Mario Brothers theme while wearing a Mario t-shirt. Not only is it annoying when people listen to their music without headphones in while on their phone or tablet, but this just seemed like it was going a little too far. I can only imagine that this guy was on his way to save Princess Peach. Wow. I hope all's well and keep up the great work. Your podcast brightens up my week. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, Mario, tone it down. <laughs> just Ah, uh, yeah. You don't uh, have to broadcast yourself. Two burly plumbers. No, one burly plumber. I have to say that is a good overall example of what Overnerds is. Yeah. That's just that's just a good nice solid one. Yeah. Um and uh also very just uh yeah. It's like uh okay, crazy nerd dressed up as something, right? Jack. That's one. Yeah. Uh being inconsiderate in public, that's two. Yep. And really that's all you need. I mean Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's over nerds. Yeah. It's over nerds. Yeah. <laughs> I I think um, I don't, I'm I'm not sure I have a a specific response to Sam, but uh, I can say that having lived on a college campus for four years, yeah, it's the line between over nerd and uh, hipster is very slight. And I often like I would see like there was a guy with a pipe that I would see all the time going to class, and that's fine, you know, because he wasn't really bugging me, but. I don't know. For he, some, what's he up? It's also dressed up as a steampunk. So that probably didn't help. Well, I'll yeah. say this: if you were listening to No More Whoppers while this was happening, you should have paused and then went up to him and said, "Have you ever heard of Nintendo?" Yeah, yeah. How about that? Um, oh yeah, I guess that's my number three. Is that you were listening to this show while it happened? So that's pretty beautiful. I mean, on its own. Yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> that's the kind of thing we should set up a voicemail for. I agree. I think we sh- we actually should um, have these, you know, performed in the submitter's own voice or someone else's. What? No. Why would they get somebody else to call for them? Because like, it'd be fun. You think it'd be Jeez, fun? Alex. Okay, fine. No fun allowed. How in the care. world the president said no to that? I will never know. Jesus. Um. Thanks a lot, Ramune. <laughs> Do we have another story? Um, yes, we do. Uh, I mean, this one comes... What? Yeah. Oh. Again, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Yes, I understand. Oh, God. I didn't uh, mean to it, say that anyway. Well, um, in college, I seem to remember a guy walking around with like an army, like a, an olive green canvas messenger bag that had Mario mushrooms on it and oh, uh, yes. a biohazard, uh, no, an umbrella logo on it and a foxhound logo on it. And the the Shinra Energy Company logo on it. That guy was pretty annoying. Oh wait, that was me. <laughs> oh, there's a twist. Yeah. yeah, but that's you know, there's no audio component to that. I don't think I was bugging anybody. I was just, I was just being a nerd. That is so Alex. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I can say also, you know, I've dressed up as a character. You have, public. yeah. But Not that necessarily was, from a game, but game related. But that was specifically for that event. You weren't on somebody's campus. Yeah. Well, also, I wasn't being rude. So. That's true. That's about as good as I can go. I think one of one of the only two times I've ever dressed up for Halloween, one of them was Mario. So. Oh wow. Yeah. I think I've I, I think I've mentioned that I was a uh, scorpion in the fifth grade. Hmm. And then I think in the sixth grade, when I was I was sort of at the height of my comic phase, I was Gambit from the X Men. Sure. And it's like, I don't, like, the first house I went to, this woman's like, wow, and, and who are you supposed to be? And I'm like, I'm this character from X-Men. He's got, like, a staff, and you can charge up cards and throw him, and he's really cool, and I like him a lot. And, like, by the end, when it, like, after a few times of that, if somebody would ask me at a house, oh, what are you supposed to be? It's just like, um, I'm just a guy. <laughs> who I'm just is a char- that? Yeah. Go to Jerry's house. <laughs> It's just I wouldn't even even bother with a story. Yeah, <laughs> which well, at least which, you learned. Which, which which that's not a great story. Reminds me of a great story. Uh, mm-hmm. I used to work at a gym in high school. My mother co-owned a gym called the Boditorium. True story. Um, <laughs> All right. And the she was uh, the the other the co-owner was this guy 
And I was on a treadmill or a bike one day, and I was wearing my Final Fantasy VII shirt, the one with Cloud on it on the back. And uh, it had the Final Fantasy logo on the front. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on this exercise bike, and I'm just going nuts. And then the guy, the, the co-owner, comes up to me, and he's just making conversation. <laughs> he's, uh, he, he looks at the shirt, he looks at the logo, and he goes, What's Final Fantasy? And I go, <laughs> Oh, it's, um, uh, it's just a thing. <laughs> and his response is, "Oh, so it's nothing." Oh God! And that reminds <laughs> I just I love that. I love of something. I love the simple back and forth of that. Oh, it's nothing. Yeah. What, what's up? Once I went to the barber, an old guy who also had you know old guys as patronage, and I was wearing a big uh, Sonic the Hedgehog shirt and it just wow. had you know the word Sonic across the bottom. And one of the other old men in there pointed it out and said, "Oh, you're a Sonics fan, huh?" Referring to the <laughs> yeah basketball team. <laughs> Seattle Supersonics. Uh, and your response yeah, was, yeah, I guess, well, yeah, that was my response. That's I sort of I still have to do that. I still have to fake that response anytime I meet somebody at a bar or something, and I say that I'm from Pittsburgh. They're like, "Oh, you must be a Steelers fan." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I I follow the footed ball, right? <laughs> I I know jack all about football. You know, it's, I could right. not actually maintain a conversation, but for purposes of." Uh, being, being friendly and chatty, I'm, I'll, I'll go along with it for a little bit. The next one comes from Wes Martin. He says, hey bros, this happened when I was nine years old. The setting was a video game store in a mall. I was at the mall browsing around with my parents when we entered the electronics boutique. My parents hovered around me trying to determine what I was interested in. Christmas was coming up in a month and they wanted ideas. I suggested some Game Boy games and kept wandering around the store. Hmm. It feels like maybe 30 seconds passed when I noticed my mother reaching for some god-awful licensed trash on the shelf. The clerk says, would you like to purchase this? I butt in at this point and ask, what are you doing? That game is no good. I turn to my mother with a quizzical look. The look quickly turns into fear as I realize my parents have left the store and are outside on a bench. (laughs) I'd actually been in the store for 15 minutes and had completely zoned out and not realized I was alone. The woman next to me was some other mother and her very young child. The mother looks at me in shock while the child begins to tear up. I quickly <laughs> left the store with my beet red face pointed straight down. I've never been back to the store and I've never told my parents. I assume this event led to my public shyness in stores that started after that and continued into my late teens. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, oh, but he, fuck. He, he, he says, rereading this, I kind of come off as a spoiled brat, but I wasn't. I was genuinely confused and bewildered as the game in question had never been brought up by either myself or my parents. Uh, love, <laughs> Wes Martin. I love that he tags it with love. Well, sure. Thank you, Wes. Good oh, God. Some. Everybody has done this, right? Tell me you've yes. done this. Yeah, yes. okay. In fact, uh, not only that. What? But I think on a couple of occasions, I have been asked by strange mothers in the middle of game sections and oh, stores no. about what would be a good game to buy. Yeah. I was really young, though, so I don't remember that well. But I've that, yeah I've, I've helped in that. That way. happened to me. Um, yeah, that's. It yeah. did not lead to mistaken identity. <laughs> no. no. Uh, I've done this uh, a few times. The most recent was a couple years ago. My girlfriend and I were at Gayo. See how it all comes back. Hey, how about and that? she was browsing the CDs. That's called a callback. Yes, she was browsing CDs, and uh, I was on the other side of the CD rack, and uh, I you know, I I I, I thought it'd be a funny gag. To just uh, get get the crappiest looking CD and suggest that she buy it, mm-hmm. so I do that and I find a really bad looking album with with a horrible with a horrible album cover, and I just shove it in her face like, "How about this one?" <laughs> Not her. <laughs> same God. same height, same hairstyle and color, same jacket. Sure. Okay, directly across from me. I was it was you can understand how I was confused, but just. It was a very aggressive, and as soon as, soon as she she looked, she could she sort of peeked from the side over the side of the album at me, and I just didn't even say anything. I just sort of pulled it back and walked away. Wow! Yeah, it takes all kinds to make no more whoppers. <laughs> yes, it does. Well, thank you, Wes. No, both good stories there. <laughs> I'd say. Yours and his. Uh, yeah, I can imagine that um, sort of ruining your emotional state after oh, something yeah. like that. Well, no, I, I think I don't... I don't Not know. you, the, the... No, I know. I just, I don't think... Um, 
I'm starting to believe that a lot of the uh, predispositions to to shyness and and you know social anxiety and stuff like that is a lot more genetic than people will admit. I don't. I think. Yes, so I don't. But I don't. I know. What? Yeah. I mean, traumatic events can surely. Yeah, traumatic events can surely have an effect. But I think the fact is, yeah. you're just if you're born to be a shy person, you're going to be a shy person. I mean, that kind of stuff is not going to help, but it's not like it could have been avoided. Yeah, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. But uh, which is which again leads into a debate about um, you know people who uh, play violent video games and then do violent things. Well, that guy is a psycho. He's going to be doing violent things anyway. I'm Alex. My dad showed me Doom when I was what 11 years old, 12 years old on his uh, work laptop. Alex, look at this game. This is awesome. You run around shooting monsters. It's really bloody, and it was a great game. How many people have I killed, Ray? Officially, none. <laughs> Well, you've killed my dignity a few times. People, not oh. imaginary fairies. Hey, wait a minute. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's because your dad is cool, and so he would. Do uh, yes, sort of thing, I yes, so. I think he's pretty cool. Yeah, and I think um, my parents uh, sort of understood that games are not yeah as uh, m- malicious a force as the media would have people believe. Right. Yeah, my mom's the same way. Uh, maybe not so much my sister. No, I think she ex- expressed concern at least once or twice, but that was a while ago. So now, should <laughs> should psychos be playing violent games? I'm going to say no. No, yeah, probably shouldn't be. Yeah, I mean, it's like I spent a lot of time but, in my room in middle school. But with and these high Steam school. sales, who can Sh- uh, shut up? I spent <laughs> I spent a lot of time in my room in in middle school and high school playing RPGs, JRPGs, like every day. Um, I mean, I was yeah. also hanging out with my friends other days. Well, those uh, aren't violent. Those are just gay. I know. Oh, God. <laughs> my point is that if video games had never been invented, I would still be up in my room probably just reading fantasy books or something. The point is I wanted to do something immersive and inward and uh, that I could do by myself and at my own yeah. pace. And boy, did you. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. No, me too. <laughs> Flash forward to Dragon Quest Tattoo. Right. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Anyway. That's, That's my ten thing. and ten. <laughs> oh, um, what's this kanji? <laughs> Actually, it reminds me of a funny story. My friend Greg is the English professor. At, no, Ray. Um, Greg. Greg Barnholt. My real friend Greg is um, an English professor at Chubu University, and um, obviously his Japanese is very good. But um, he was he was having a barbecue at his house, I think, a couple years ago, and. I guess what uh, some of his friends like to do, they think is funny, is get him really drunk and ask him to read kanji. <laughs> <laughs> so they hand they yeah. like like they handed him a, like a, a box of cookies, and he's like, "What's the first ingredient out here? Sand? Why would there be sand in here?" <laughs> and it was a kanji for sugar. They look almost the same. Uh, <laughs> I just I love the idea that he, he thought there might be sand in cookies. Yeah, that sounds brilliant. Uh, yeah, it sounds more brilliant when you. Do it in your voice. You yell it out like that. <laughs> well, I'm just copying the voice that he did when he told me about it. Yeah. Well, you turn it into magic. Uh, that's what I'm saying. That's what we that's do what I'm here. That's I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, good over, nerds. Yes, thank you, everybody. We've got some more planned for next week. If you haven't heard yours, it's new to you. <laughs> <laughs> it will be eventually, yes. It, yes. <clears throat> All right, well, I guess that's just about the end of the show. And yeah, wait, if you're listening to this and you haven't liked the Facebook page, please hurry it up. It means nothing. It does absolutely nothing no. for us, I think. It's just fun. It's only a vector for you to make fun of people's names. Exactly. If you guys don't, I'm not going to have an outlet for these bad jokes, and they're going to come out of my work, and I'm going to get fired prematurely. Right. Oh, I faxed in, I faxed in my official uh, desire to not re-up my contract, so it's, it's, it's official. It's locked I mean, I, in. I'd already told my supervisor, but now there's paperwork. I'm excited. Yeah, it's locked Pretty in. Good. Under reason for uh, reason for not seeking another contract, I just said, uh, in quotations, I wrote, um, unacceptable gender-specific physical trauma. <laughs> yeah, not bad. So I'm, I'm hoping that gets the message across. It probably won't. No. But you tried. <laughs> I did. Yeah. It's a pretty good show. I've played almost every drop on my board this week, so oh, wow. I think that's a good a good turnout. Um, that was so yeah, cool. do check out the Facebook page. Facebook.com slash Do check out I the train. my trains here. 
And, like the um, trains page. Send over nerds to nomorewhoppers at gmail.com. Ooh, could you? Oh, oh yeah. Um, don't forget to have listened to the new X and 10, uh, mm-hmm. which came out a week ago. There should be five episodes available right now. I've only recorded the first two episodes as we're recording this. I don't know how uh, the next three are. I hope they're good. I gotta tell you, I was not happy with the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> Ringing endorsement. Yeah, I might um, go back and re-record some because it's, it's. I think it's almost too much of me just describing what's going on and not enough commentary, which was sort of uh, the strength of X and uh, Ten and Ten. Yeah, I'm sorry. I want people to get the full effect of the story because it's kind of it's kind of interesting. All right, everybody, here's Alex. Yeah, I understand though. You you do good work generally. Thank you. Don't worry about it. Um, what else? Whoa. Of course, we have our main site, nomorewhoppers.homer.com. That's right. Go uh, there. If you go there, you can find a link to donate as well. That's right. Give Pick us, us a few dollars. and uh, Float some money to X and 10 while you're at it. Again, please yeah. specify which one you're donating to when you donate. Okay. Um, and again, you know, I'm saying this just in case we may have got some new listeners lately. Who knows? But uh, what we do is if you donate, Alex will uh, tell your story. That's right. And if you like the Facebook page, Alex will make fun of your name. Yes, I'll in the, give in you the a most funny name, not, in not, the most um, good spirited way possible. Yes, of course. That's what I mean to say. <laughs> We're not assholes. <laughs> are you kidding me? I don't care. So yeah, those are our two little fan fun bonuses there. And then of course there's over nerds, and that's just your stories of nerdery that you send yeah. to us. Uh, you know what? We've been sitting on, we've been uh, talking about and sort of sitting on uh, potential t-shirt stuff for a while now, and I apologize for not having gotten the ball rolling on that stuff uh, Well, there's a lot of things yet. you need to roll along. But, what's that? <laughs> there's a lot of things you need to get the ball rolling on. Yes, I know! Um, oh, man, I, I meant to talk about bar stuff. I'll do that next week. Uh, but yeah, um, we're still taking submissive, submissive, we're still taking submissions. Fuck! <laughs> We're still, it must be the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, because I'm mumble mouth. We're still taking submissions for t-shirt designs. If you have one you think would be funny, um, something you'd like to see on a shirt, any sort of recommendations, please put it on the Facebook page. We're, we, we, we're still trying to find uh, figure out what the best option is for getting these printed and sold. So if you have any uh, ideas there, please let us know what you think the best option is. We've never done this before, have we, Ray? No. Thank you. shirt thing. No. I have some ideas that I might okay. work on, but also one or two of them might require a better artist. I don't know. Okay. I'll think about it. How about that? Please think about it. <laughs> I mean, we are running up on our first anniversary. Oh, that's right. Don't forget that. What are you getting? Um, the new version of a game called Dragon Quest. Yes! <laughs> Not really. Aw. Although that'll probably be out at the same time. Yeah. So... <laughs> A new version of a game called Kickle Cubicle. No, that never got a sequel. Sorry. Isn't that a tragedy? I don't know if I played that game. I just remember okay. reading, uh, like, my... <laughs> right, Nintendo Power. <laughs> this, this show's gonna go for four hours today. Yeah, thanks. No, like, um, I learned about a lot of game titles not through Nintendo Power, but through the Game Genie book. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. It's like, and I like how, for some I didn't, I could not understand why the Game Genie book was abbreviating... Game titles to like four characters. Yeah. You remember that? No. It would abbreviate. Yeah, I think it was um, for purposes of looking up a game title. It would give each game like a four character code. Like uh, Final Fantasy, I think, was just fine f- or fina, you know. In most cases, it was just the first four characters of that, that title. But uh, Kickle Cubicle, I remember, was just kick! Oh, okay. When you, when you looked it up in the table of contents. And then I like how they gave each game like a summary, and then, and then it's like, use these codes to help Mario rescue Peach from Bowser, or whatever. That's the way to get 99 free men on Super Mario Brothers. Yes, there you go. Yes. Touching story. Uh, <laughs> I'm very excited <laughs> for Duke Nukem Forever. Let's blow this pop stand, okay? All right. Alex, thanks for joining me. Thanks for letting me... Thank you for having been joined by me. Right, right, right. yes. Thank you for allowing me to have been present. Everybody else, keep your nose clean and we'll see you next week. Gold subscribers, stick around until after the show. We continue our classic TV club with Season 2, Episode 4 of Viper. I don't really call this an ending, but some people included it on early SNES lists. (laughs) 